I'm John of Buchanan, and in this video, we're going to look at mix volume considerations. What do I mean by that? Okay, so as a mix develops and we add more and more parts to a project, effectively, the cumulative effect of all of that individual channel volume has implications for the output stage. Eventually, all of that sound comes through to the stereo bus, and of course, it then goes out into the world, because what we do is to capture the stereo bus when we bounce down a mix to turn it into the stereo mix that we want to, yeah, present to the universe, if you like. The only problem is, what happens if that mix bus is overloading? In this track, we've got a really common situation going on, which is that within the mixer itself, no individual channel is overloading, but the mix bus is. The summed volume of all of those channels is too much for the output stage. This is one of the live loop sessions, which I've just turned into a regular Logic project, and we'll listen through to it, looking at the mixer page as it plays back. And in particular, we're gonna pay attention to the stereo output here. None of the individual channels will overload, but I think this one is going to. Okay, first thing to say is if you want to experiment with these very sounds, this is the Solaris uh, live loop session, and you can put together uh, the sort of version of that project you like. Now then, you can see the issue that I was talking about. The loudest individual track volume, I think, is the beat stem over here, which peaks at minus 0.6 dB, so it's not overloading in itself. And we can see when I press stop, all the other kind of green LEDs show me how loud each individual channel got. But if we add all those volumes together, which effectively is what happens when we sum a mix through to the stereo output stage, we can see that the channel is overloading. Now, life would be really straightforward if Logic didn't contain this kind of useful and kind of really not useful internal limiter, because it doesn't actually sound like it's distorting this mix. There's no obvious sense where suddenly there's this blowout where we get this horrible digital distortion. Effectively, it's absolutely clear that there's a kind of little bit of wriggle room that somehow the way that Logic's been coded is that we can go into the red a little bit before we actually start hearing that audio distortion. And the reason why that's useful is it allows us to work. And the reason why it's not useful is because if I print this mix by pressing the bounce button and rendering this mix, the mix is going to overload, at which point we'll hear the digital distortion that I'm talking about. So it's useful for a while until suddenly it needs dealing with. So how could we deal with the issue of the fact that all of this mix is overloading? Well, there are a number of ways we could begin to approach um, the idea of looking after level in this way, some of which are a good idea and some of which really aren't a good idea. So the first thing I could do would be to take the master fader here down a bit. Now this is effectively a VCA fader for the entire mix really what it's doing is it's controlling overall output level. So whilst the stereo bus is here, the overall volume is being controlled by the master output. So it stands to reason that if I was to drop the level by more than the overload amount, effectively volume is going to be managed, right? Well, yeah, kind of. If I play the loudest bit again, this time it won't overload. Okay, so problem solved, except that really not, because the master output fader comes after the stereo output channel. And the reason why that matters is because if what I want to do, let's say in the stereo output channel, is to put a processor like the adaptive limiter, which is going to sort of balance out the overall volume of my track a little bit, as well as hyping the volume a little bit. In other words, acting as what we call a kind of brick wall style limiter to give me extra volume. What the master fader is gonna do is to then take that maximum volume and turn it down by 4 dB, which means that compared to all of the other mixes out in the world, my mix is gonna be 4 dB quieter than all of that. And if it turns out that actually in order to compensate for that volume drop, 
I actually have to bring the master fader down 10 dB, I have an even more exacerbated version of the same problem. So whilst dropping the master fader gets you back into kind of territory where we're not overloading anymore, it's a short-term fix and ultimately it's going to cost me further into the process where if I then start processing my track with output channel processing, actually that's not going to help at all. And in fact, I would go so far as to say that I never ever touch the master fader output. What I want to do is to get volume sorted before that point rather than after it. So it's useful to know that it's there, but my advice would be leave it alone. Okay, so if we're not gonna do it there, how else could we manage volume? Okay, well, one thing we could do would be to put a gain plugin at the top of the master channel output. Okay, so if I come down to the utility folder, here is the gain plugin. Now, gain is all about input level. And if you think about it, the very first plugin slot in the stereo output channel is the input to the stereo output. In other words, we've got all of the mix coming into this place, and at that place, I can regulate its volume at the input stage. Now, this actually might work quite nicely. I know that none of the individual channels are overloading, which means that none of them are individually distorting, which means that if I was to regulate volume from a gain perspective at the very top of this output stage, yes, I'll be losing volume temporarily, but I can compensate for that later by adding a plugin like the Adaptive Limiter or other plugins to in some way bring volume up at the output stage. So one solution to my problem might be to use the gain plugin at the top of the output stage. And again, if we run the loudest section of the track, this offset should buy me enough headroom to ensure that the mix doesn't slip into the red. So if you've got a mix and you've got lots of things going on and it just so happens that whilst you've got the balance of your mix working perfectly, the output channel is overloading, this is a one-stop solution for fixing that. By putting a gain plugin at the top of that stage, you're effectively regulating input into the stereo output channel. But of course, you might be of a mind to think, well, actually, I don't really want the summed volume of my mix to get to a point where I know it's overloading at the output. What I want to do is to manage volume before that. In other words, if I turn down all of the channel volumes, I won't need a gain at the top of the input stage because I won't be overloading the stereo output track. And you're right, that would be absolutely the best way to do it but we need to be a little bit careful. If I look through my mix, I can see that loads of these individual channels don't have any automation assigned to them at all, which means that they can't be using volume automation. If they're not using any automation, they definitely can't be using volume automation. And if I look through my track, I can see that that's true definitely for all but two channels. So this track here, this electric guitar track, and this track over here, which looks like a synth track, they both have read lights on, which immediately makes me think, okay, I wonder if that's volume automation. Now, why does that matter? Well, it matters because volume automation takes precedence over any static level that I set for an individual channel. I'll show you what I mean. If I come out of the mix stage, and if I open this up, this electric guitar channel, and I press A, Sure enough, there is some volume automation on this channel. Okay, well, what does that mean? Well, it means that if I decide that the way that I want to manage the output level is to simply bring all of the faders down, okay, no problem, I'll take the fader for this channel. It's currently at minus 5.8, so I'll take it down three or so decibels. Let's take it down to minus 8.8. The moment I press play, the only problem is it jumps back to where it was. Why? Because the volume automation line takes precedence over any static level that I apply to that individual fader. So you can see the problem. If I go through my mix and I take all of the channels that don't have any volume automation down by 3 dB, that's where they'll stay. But any channels that do have volume automation written onto them, they're gonna jump straight back up to where they were to start with. Now, what does that mean? Well, it kind of means that I've got to go track by track to make sure that 
I'm managing each channel individually. Now that sounds painful, but I can see straight away that all of the tracks up to that particular line, or that particular track don't have any volume automation. And I can see that all of the other ones don't as well. So I can actually do this in two really easy stages. The first thing I can do is to come back into the mixer I've got the track that I need to worry about or just be mindful of currently soloed, which means that I can select all of the previous tracks in one go. And what I can do is to drag their faders down. So if I take a fader like this one, minus two, I can take this down to minus five. And I know that I've applied a 3 dB offset to all of those individual tracks. I can do the same thing with the subsequent ones. And I'm gonna come all the way through to this percussion line here. And again, I'm gonna drop these by 3 dB. So they come down to minus minus five. Okay, that just leaves me with the one track which has got volume automation. And if I come back into the automation, what I can actually do is to come over here where I have an opportunity to trim the level of the automation line. At the moment, I can see that the start node is minus 5.8. So a little bit of maths takes me down to minus 8.8. .8, and I now know that I've brought that channel down by the same amount as all of the ones that I was able to apply just that main offset to. Now, we're nearly there. Let's just jump back into the mixer and ask ourselves a question about the reverb and delay channels. Okay, do they need to come down by 3 dB as well? Well, remember, their levels are dependent on the levels of the channel content that's feeding them. In other words, if I bring down the synth pad on this track here, if it just so happens that that's feeding into the reverb, by bringing its fader down, remember there's going to be proportionally less reverb. So I don't need to worry about auxiliary levels. I can leave those exactly where they are, and that won't suddenly mean that the reverb and the delay are louder than everything else. Their levels are dependent on the other channels. So what I've now done is to manage the mix earlier. I've built more what we refer to as headroom into the mix, meaning that hopefully if I now play the loudest section of this track again, because I've brought the levels down, this isn't going to overload in the way that it was before. Nearly. Okay, so what I've done is I brought it down 3 dB and it turns out it needs to come down a little bit more than that. And that's fine, I can just go back through and repeat the process. And of course, if you're not having to spend time describing it, it's very quick to do. So for all of those channels, if I want to be really safe, what I can do is to make sure that I bring everything down by five or six dB, depending on how much you're overloading the output stage. And also just thinking about whether or not the mix is already finished. Is there anything else going into this project? If I'm only halfway through and I'm already overloading the output, then maybe what I'm gonna do is to bring things down by more like seven or eight dB to build some extra headroom into the mix. So what we've done here is to start thinking about the various ways that we can manage output level. It's really common when we're working on tracks to suddenly look up and discover that the stereo output channel has overloaded. Don't need to panic, but I definitely wouldn't use the master fader as the controller to get volume under control. Yes, the gain uh, plugin at the top of the output stage is one way of managing it very quickly, but I would, I think, recommend to be a little bit more patient and to go back through your mix and either just simply to uh, provide a kind of volume drop on all of those channels that aren't using volume automation at the same time as just being careful that you're trimming that volume automation to make sure that all of the channels come down by the same amount. A little more than I've done in this video.